Caleb Coho back again for another installment of our singles division as we continue to build towards our crazy end of the year title match. Joining me today on the desk is Mark and Chaka. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I think uh, we got ourselves a good one. Got uh, two guys that uh, definitely enjoy being here, but could definitely like to win, you know, or just trying to look up, uh, looking to scrape by another one. Absolutely. Got two guys who just have a record that just floats at the 500, but are definitely better than that record suggests. Got Scott the Esquire Harvey and Jeremy the Pinhead Potter. It's going to be a good one today. Uh, starting with Jeremy, we'll talk to you. Uh, yeah. You've been playing pretty good all year in both divisions, not going to lie to you. A pretty great start with Bring Out Your Dead in teams, and now you get to come back into the singles run. How you feeling? Yeah, I feel good, man. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, they say that everybody has a doppelganger. Well, I feel like everybody also has an opposite, and Scott is definitely my opposite in the movie realm. So, but I like when I get to play somebody whose tastes are completely different. It's a good way to explore and open up. It's a good one of the good things about what we're doing here. Definitely, I like I like that approach uh, a lot, actually. Uh, so then we'll bring in your opponent, Scott Harvey. Uh, you uh, you say it every match you play, you're like, I win one, I lose one, I win one, I lose one. Yeah. It's like not destiny. Are you hoping to break that pattern today? Do you think you can do it? How you feel? Of course, I, I'm hoping to break it, but this is like my 19th match or something, and it hasn't really been broken maybe once. But um, yeah, no. So, Jeremy, you, you, you know, you might be in for some good luck because I won the last one. And so that usually means I lose the next one. But um, yeah, it's funny. Jeremy says that I think there's probably quite a few people around here that would say that I'm their opposite when it comes to film taste. But uh, that's why I enjoy doing, you know, the round table and stuff like that. But I'm excited to be here. Um, always fun to play a singles match and especially against the faction mate. It's going to be a nice, friendly match. And, uh, you know, may the best or because it's melee, luckiest man win. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll go ahead and get in a round of one, which works like this. You're each going to get eight questions from eight different areas within the realm of general movie trivia. Should you get all eight questions correct, we each get a bonus question. You have three repeats for the entirety of the match and a challenge rule. Any questions as we get in round number one? No. All right. Like First question will cover the category of animated movies. What type of animal is Sid in the Ice Age franchise? I like the first couple of these. More likely. I'll say the first. First, first couple. Yeah, first couple. Of more more than one. Yeah, yeah, more. I like more than just one of these, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're not good anymore, but they were okay at the start. Five. Four, three, two, one. Only gonna get one out of me, big guy. <laughs> Pens down. We're gonna go to Scott. Pretty sure it's not him, but instead of Willie Mammoth. Uh, we'll go to Jeremy. Dawn of the Dinosaurs bangs. Uh, it's a sloth. I like Dawn of the Dinosaurs, but that's correct for a point. Uh, <coughs> next question: What category, Mark? Yeah, I come in the. Uh, ooh, that's weird. It would come in the category of 2010s. What film centers around a group of fame-obsessed teenagers that use the internet to track the whereabouts of celebrities in order to rob their homes? You got the, I got the easy, like, oh, I was going to save the question. You were like, I have to, like, state a thesis real quick to get you the answer to question. It was slight panic. I was nodding around one and scroll up and then saw what, and saw five lines. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> It's beautiful. Did you see it? You're like, ah, someone wrote me an essay. Five, four, three, two, one. Pets down, we'll go to Jeremy. The Bling Ring? And we'll go to Scott. Very disappointing movie, The Bling Ring. The Bling Ring is correct. Two to one, Jeremy, to get to your third question in the category of Oscars. Amy Adams, Viola Davis, Taraji P. Henson, and Marissa Tomei all lost Best Supporting Actress to who? I'll give you all the losers. You know, the person who won. I'm I mean, sure everyone who's lost is just like, oh, thank you for acknowledging that I lost this year. Like, I mean, who cares? I'm not going to watch this shit. So I'm, you know, I know. If it ever made it to them, they'd be like, well, it's just weird. Fuck you too, guys. But, it would be weird if like, we had celebrity. Uh, Read the question. Uh, Scott's first repeat. Category of Oscars. Amy Adams, Viola Davis, Taraji P. Henson, and Marissa Tomei all lost Best Supporting Actress to who? I think that'd be it, would, 
it would be weird if we had like c- celebrity fans, like for what I mean, knowing that they just had to DM us, DM us, and you know, they would probably get a match. Imagine Tom Lee Jones just like, I really like what you do. Four. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's I don't even think he understands his own moves at this point. <laughs> One pens down. We're gonna go to Jeremy. I said Monique. Uh, we'll go to Scott. Uh, it's the year before that. I think I didn't get it though. Uh, we're looking for Penelope Cruz for Vicky Cruz. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so no perfect grounds as we get to your next question. In what category, Mark? Come in the category of uh, classics. Henry Fonda, Anthony Quinn, and Jane Darwell all appear in what 1940s Western? That's a. It's not. I guess an agro family. Kind of a double. Double up on genres. I have no. I don't know for a reference. I don't. I, like if if it's not in color, I probably haven't seen it. Yeah. That's fair. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of people that way. Yeah. Bye. Four. Repeat the question, please. That is Jeremy's first repeat. All right. Again, in classics, Henry Fonda. Anthony Quinn and Jane Darwell all appear in what 1940s Western? Let's say I don't watch old movies, but you know, just like, I don't watch a lot of them. You know. Not necessarily ones you immediately gravitate to. I get it. I used to. Yeah. I don't, I'm not. I'm, I have to be in a mood to go out. Yeah, it's just weird. They have the credits at the beginning, like it throws you off. And like, exactly. Or like you know, you put it on, and you're just like, damn it. I expected to see some bright technicolor, and I didn't. I didn't get it. Five, two, four, three. Yeah, silly. Pens down. Uh, we'll go to Scott. The grapes are wrath. Uh, we'll go to Jeremy. Uh, yeah, that's the grapes. Or I said the grape train robbery. Uh, both incorrect. Looking for the Oxbow incident. The Oxbow yeah. incident. Anthony Quinn wasn't in the grapes. Uh, so move on to your next question in the category of the nineteen eighties. In The Running Man, what name is given to those tasked with hunting and killing the competitors in the titular game show? Do you see yourself having this particular role of hunting people down and killing potential game competitors? Not really. I I feel like that's more Boatman's job or Scully's job. My job is to be the Caesar Flickerman. Oh, okay. Look at this! Look at these crazy things! (laughs) They're hoping to slink into that role. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> One. Pens down, we'll go to Jeremy. Uh, stalkers. And we'll go to Scott. I just said runners. Uh, stalkers is correct. So Jeremy will continue to lead three to one. Let's get your next question. I'm in the category of directors. Who has directed biopics about a U.S. president, a Vietnam War veteran, and a 60s rock band. It's an eclectic mix. Yeah, it's, it's weird when you lay it all out there and say, like, oh, you know, this this person has actually done all these things. It was, it was weird to read that and find that There's out. Look at go. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, we'll go to Scott. Oliver Stone. And Jeremy. Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone is correct. Four to two is against your penultimate question of the round in the category of war. What war is Dr. Zhivago primarily set in? Classic. Oh, classic. Pick a war question. The old standby. (laughs) <laughs> five, four. This big one. We asked like, about five of them, so you know, just one, right, right, one down. Ends down. We're gonna go to uh, Scott. I hope it's not the other thing I was thinking. I was like World War Two, World War Two, uh, and Jeremy. World War One. World War One is correct. Uh, so five and two to get to your last question of the round. In what category, Mark? Come yeah, in the category of scores and soundtracks. Lana Del Rey, Will I Am, and Jay Z all wrote songs for what 2013 film? 
once again. What a bunch. I don't know who that first person is. Really? I mean, I could. You could probably tell me who they're with, and I could probably get it. I was like, I like, I don't know who that. I don't know who that is. I'm not like a fan, but like, come on, I know who they are. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jeremy. Yeah, no idea. Hustle and flow. I will go to Scott. Abomination of a film, The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby is correct. So Jeremy will lead five to three, but I think it happens to get to round number two, which is the wheel round, and it works like this. You're each going to get and from the lovely wheel from wheelsite.com. If you like the category you land on, you're going to get five questions worth two points apiece. You can opt to multiple choice. It devalues it down to being only worth one. If you don't like what you land on the first time, you can spend again, but you're stuck with it every land on the second time. Be aware there is stealing in this round. You each have two repeats remaining, and your categories on the wheel tonight are... They are, uh, Bombac, R-rated, directed by Robert Rodriguez, 2010s, 1980s, recent releases, comic book movies, classics, and animated as well as Spinners and Opponents' Choice. Jeremy, you're in the lead. Would you like to go first or defer to Scott? Uh, I'd like to ask my manager, hey, Scott, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll defer. All right, and this will be the first spin for Scott. And it lands on the category of animated movies. So I like to keep it or spin again. I'll spin again. All right. You'll be stuck with whatever land on, on this spin. And you'll get questions from whatever category you want. It is spinner's choice. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll do uh, directed by Noah Baumbach. Thank God. All right. I'll go ahead and I'll give you your questions <laughs> in the category of directed by Noah Baumbach. Are you ready, Scott? Yes. Your first question. What was the first Bombach film that had an original score from rock musician James Murphy? Greenberg. That is correct for two points. Your second question. In Margot at the Wedding, Pauline jokes that Malcolm is competitive with what famous rock star? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, David Bowie, B, Axl Rose, C, John Bon Jovi, or D, Bono. David Bowie. That is incorrect. Jeremy, the chance for the one point still. Your options are A, David Bowie, B, Axl Rose, C, John Bon Jovi, or D, Bono. I'll say D. D, Bono is correct for the one point steal. Uh, all right, Scott, your third question. Which actress plays the character Miami in Bombach's debut film, Kicking and Screaming? Parker Posey. That is correct for two points. Your fourth question. Harold had retired as a professor at what New York college in the Meyerowitz stories? Multiple choice. Your options are A, Bard, B, Barnard, C, Columbia, or D, Hunter. A. A, Bard is correct for one point. That was my gut. And your final question. The ending credit song of the film White Noise shows people doing a choreographed dance in what type of location? Supermarket. That is correct for two more points. So at the end of Scott spin, he gets a score up to 10. That steal puts Jeremy up to six. Anything that happens, we get into Jeremy's spin at the wheel. Your first spin is away. You land on the 1980s, which like to keep it or spin again? I'll spin again. All right, and you'll be stuck with it. land on, on this spin. And you land on classics. Mark, you want to go ahead and give me some questions in the category of classic? Yeah, all right. Sure, I'll be delighted. Uh, Jeremy, you prepared for your questions in classics? Not at all, but I'll, let's hear them. All righty then. Your first question. Who plays divorcee Jerry Warrenier in The Awful Truth? Multiple choice. Choice options are A, James Stewart, 
B, Cary Grant, C, Spencer Tracy, or D, Fred Astaire? I'll say Spencer Tracy. That is incorrect. Going over Scott for the one-point steal. Is it A, James Stewart, B, Cary Grant, C, Spencer Tracy, or D, Fred Astaire? Cary Grant. That is correct for the one-point steal. So Jeremy, for your second question. Jerry's friend Adam plays what instrument in An American in Paris? Piano. That's correct for two points. <laughs> Shit. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Jim Stark, John, Plato Crawford, and Buzz Gunderson are characters in what 50s film? Oh, that one of those names rings a bell. Give me multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, Rio Bravo, B, Mr. Roberts, C, Rebel Without a Cause, or D, Singing in the Rain. Singing in the rain. That is incorrect. Going over to Scott for the one-point steal. Is it A, Rio Bravo, B, Mr. Roberts, C, Rebel Without a Cause, or D, Singing in the Rain? Rebel Without a Cause. That is correct for the one-point steal. Going to your penultimate question in the category. Who directed Yankee Doodle Dandy? Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, John Sturgis, B, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, C, Stanley Donan, or D, Michael Curtis or Curtis. I'll say B. B is incorrect. Going over to Scott for the one point steal is it A, John Sturgis, B, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, C, Stanley Donan, or D, Michael Curtis. C. Let's see, Stanley Donan is also incorrect. We're looking for D, Michael Curtis. Wow. Last one. And then, uh, uh, Jeremy, final question in the category. Conductor 71 is, I'm sorry, Conductor 71, who is sent to collect Peter's soul, is from what country in a matter of life and death? Multiple choice. Is it a, multiple choice options are A, Germany, B, United States, C, Japan, or D, France? Germany. Germany is incorrect. Going with Scott for the one point steals at A, Germany, B, United States, C, Japan, or D, France? Oh, I, did, I just watched it not that long ago. United States. That is also incorrect. We were looking for D, France. Yeah. All right. So at the end of Jeremy's spin and at the end of round two in general, Scott holds the lead 12 to Jeremy's eight fans. They can have to round number three, which is the new and improved pick your poison round. It works like this. We have categories on the board for you two to go back and forth and draft until you each have four categories. Once the category has been taken, then your opponent cannot take the category. Once you have your four categories chosen, you can choose what order you'd like to take them in, in one, two, three, or four, in whatever order. Uh, we go until there's a mathematical elimination and a winner. So, uh, Scott, you're lead. What category would you like to take first? Your categories um, available to be taken tonight, again, are action, adventure, 2000s, musicals, classics, directors, Oscars, sci-fi fantasy, and mystery thrillers. I'd like to take action adventure first. All right, Jeremy, over to you. Uh, Sci-fi fantasy, please. All right, over to Scott. I'll take directors. Back to Jeremy. Uh, 2000s. Back to Scott. Uh, mystery thriller. Back to Jeremy. So what do we have left? Musical, classics, and Oscars. Um, yes. 
You got it. Musicals. All right, it's got your final category. I'll take Oscars. Which means that you'll be left with classics, Jeremy. Yeah, so, right. uh, what category would you like to take it? At what point value, Jeremy, for your first question? Um, give me classics for one. Let's just go ahead. Classics for one. All right. Your one pointer in the category of classics. Who plays the titular character in Mildred Pierce? Betty Davis. That's incorrect. Looking for Joan Crawford. Yeah, okay. Um, what category would you like to take it? At what point? Uh, musicals for two. All right, your two pointer in the category of musicals. What musical features songs such as "Run and Tell That," "Without Love," and "Welcome to the Sixties"? Repeat the question. That is your second repeat. Question again in musicals. What musical features songs such as Run and Tell That, Without Love, and Welcome to the 60s? Hair? Incorrect. So close. Hairspray. I almost say hair spray. <laughs> that one syllable away. Uh, <sighs> what category would you like to take next and at what point value? Uh, 2000s for three. All right, 2000s for three. It is your three-pointer. In what 2000s film will you find a fictional British musical group named Pop? I use my last one. All right, your question again. In what 2000s film will you find a fictional British musical group named Pop? Man. Music and lyrics. That is correct for three yeah. points. <laughs> nice pull. So here is the situation. Jeremy's going to have to answer his four-pointer in the category of sci-fi fantasy. If he hits it, he'll send it back to Scott and avoid the TKO. If he misses, Scott will win via TKO. Uh, Jeremy, your four-pointer in the category of sci-fi fantasy. What sci-fi film is about astronauts being removed from a ship right before it flies to Mars and faking footage to make it look like they made it to the planet? Capricorn one. That is correct for oh, four. Nice pull. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking it was the moon, but I, that's the only one I could think. Shout out, anything. <laughs> All right. So with that, Jeremy gets the score up to fifteen. Oh, uh, sends it back to Scott. What category would you like to take it? At what point value? Um, how do we want to do this? Let's take Oscars for three. Oscars. Go ahead and give us a question, Mark. Yep. Here's your three point question in Oscars. The Born Ultimatum, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and Sound of Metal all won what Oscar? Best sound mixing. That is incorrect. We're looking for best film editing. Ah, that's right. What category would you like to take it at what point value? Uh, let's go action for one. 
Uh, this will be your action adventure question for one point. Your question. Who plays the titular character in 1959's Ben-Hur? Charlton Heston. That is correct for one point. Uh, right, what category is like taken at what point value? Um, what's the other one? I have mystery thriller for two. All right. Is that your mystery thriller question for two points? Your question. Who directed the 2017 film Good Time? Benny and Josh Safdie. That is correct. We would also just take the Safdie brothers. Sure. I didn't. I wanted to be totally sure. <laughs> All right. So here's the situation. Scott's going to have to take his four in the category of directors. If he hits, he will win the match. If he misses, we are going to sudden death. Uh, go ahead and give him your question. Yeah, here's a four point question in directors. The 2014 film, She's Funny That Way, was the final film directed by whom? Repeat the question. Is your second repeat? Question again. The 2014 film "She's Funny That Way" was the final film directed by whom? Peter Bogdanovich. And your winner, Scott, the Esquire, Harvey Peter Bogdanovich, is correct. What a barn burner at the end there, Mark. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, both guys came to play today. It showed. Um, you know, uh, it was it was looking, you know, uh, as it was looking not so great, at least for for Jeremy, at least a little bit. He got a category. Wasn't so uh, wasn't so hot about was able to uh, push it in uh, round number three and make Scott answer some questions. And look like for a second we we're going to look like for a second Jeremy was going to go to another sudden death match. It, it was it was the battle of two uh, principles here at MLA. Can Scott win two in a row, or will Jeremy go to sudden death? Which <laughs> one is going to win out? And it looks like Scott going two in a row was the one that went out today. We'll go ahead and talk to our fortunate second place finisher, Jeremy. Uh, you played commendably well, despite essentially getting what was a spinner's opponent's choice game. Uh, you got you kept it close. You avoided the TKO. You had some big pulls that are in round mm. three. How are you feeling? Um. Yeah, I mean, I fucking hate classics, man. I'm not, not that I hate classic movies. I hate the category. That was the one thing on the wheel I didn't want, and I got it. But it's cool. Congrats, Scott, man. I'm happy for you. Uh, I'm happy to be – I've been pulling threes and fours all year, and I like that, and I feel good about it. I mean, I pulled music and lyrics straight out of my ass. Capricorn 1, I kind of had a guess, you know, but – I'll, I'll take it. It's been uh, an up and down year, uh, but I've, I'm right where I – yeah, and you know, right around 500. So, yeah, no shame, no hurt. Uh, absolutely, this does put an end to your single season. Uh, mm -hmm. but I would say, all in all, not a bad one at all. Uh, pretty good season all around, especially with teams involved. How are you uh, feeling about your season at all? And who's uh, someone that you're itching to play when you come back next season? Uh, I feel good about the season so far. I mean, I've had a couple rough tournament draws my first two years with former champs, you know, in the first round. That's tough. Uh, but I don't feel like I played bad at all in any time. I feel like a little bit of bad luck. I missed a couple here and there. A couple categories I could probably shore up if I wanted to put the time into them. But uh, all around, I'm happy. I have a lot of fun and I enjoy it, you know. And as far as playing somebody when I come back, I, I don't know. Whoever. Whoever's right around there. Kind of good luck, bad luck, good days, bad days. That that guy, that lady, whoever that is, I'll play him. I like it. Uh, we'll see you next season. Uh, we bring in your winner today, Scott Harvey. Uh, a big one here. Uh, I think a great bit of luck in your favor. Uh, it was looking not necessarily in your favor coming out of round one. 
big spinner's choice round and some big pulls there in round three. How are you feeling? Yeah, I definitely needed that. I mean, you know, Jeremy probably would have beaten me if any other circumstances in, in round two there, but I, I didn't play that well. I'll have to play better. But, you know, it's nice to not play that well and still get a win. I feel like that's something that I've not been able to do in the past. Something that's something that everybody has to do, I think, at some point, you know, on, on their road to wherever they're trying to go but it was a, it was a fun match i mean jeremy had some great pulls there in the end i'm i'm glad you know i can say it now i guess because i won but uh i always like i never want it to be like oh he just misses all of his questions or whatever and the match just ends like that like i like answering the questions you know so even though it's a little bit more stress i had to hit the last question or whatever it was fun to get to answer some questions um and uh yeah i was just fortunate that the four came up and i knew it so I'm glad I redeemed myself in the last round. Absolutely. Um, so you move forward in our little picture that we've got going on here. Uh, you'll be taking on, since the match goes up the same day, I'm not going to give you exact this, but you'll be taking on either uh, Familiar Face and Amari Moses or one Will Cohen. Uh, between the two, who are you more interested in facing and uh, how are you feeling about either potential matchup? I mean, let's keep the the Club Dread show or Club Dread. Not, we're not Club Dread anymore. The the Phoenix Club show going. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, it's been a long week. Uh, the Phoenix Club show going. I'd love to play Rue. Uh, you know, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, he knows his stuff. Again, similar match, and like we would be opposites in the way that Jeremy and I were. But those matches are fun sometimes. So, uh, but I'd like to get revenge against Will too because um, we lost to them in teams. So. Absolutely. Well, we will see you in that match. Um, and for everyone here, uh, this has been another edition of Movie Melee Singles. That has been Jeremy. That has been Scott. That has been Mark. I've been killed. This has been Movie Melee. We'll see you guys real soon with another great match. Goodbye. Storm in the castle. Think it'll work? Bye-bye.